Python tutorial, Bruges Godfrey test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homoelasticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Residuals no autocorrelation consists of evaluating whether regression residuals or forecasting errors have a constant mean. This is evaluated through Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test, which consists of using original regression residuals data as dependent variable together with original regression independent variables, adding lagged original regression residuals data as independent variables, and assessing if lagged original regression residuals data as independent variables are jointly statistically significant. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bruch, Testing for Autocorrelation in Dynamic Linear Models, published in Australian Economic Papers in 1978. As a formula, here we have the example of a multiple regression with two independent or explanatory variables in which we have that current period, original regression residuals or forecasting errors are equal to a constant, plus a beta 1 coefficient multiplied by the first independent or explanatory variable, plus a beta 2 coefficient multiplied by the second independent or explanatory variable, plus the sum from the first to the p number of lags included within Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test of the corresponding gamma coefficients multiplied by previous periods, original regression, residuals or forecasting errors, plus this regression, residuals or forecasting errors. And what we're testing is Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value. If Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was less than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was greater than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were not autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. Great. So let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study residuals no autocorrelation with greater detail. Perfect. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. In this tutorial, we'll be working within Python tutorial Bruce Godfrey test code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import NumPy SMP, then pandas SPD. Then, from stats models, we're going to import regression.linear underscore model as rg. Then, tools.tools .tools as ct for our constant or intercept. And then, stats.diagnostics as dg for Bruce Godfrey test. The following step is to create the data for Bruce Godfrey test. So, here we create the object name data, which is equal to pd or pandas.read underscore csv. And within it, we have the path to the data file found within data directory and the corresponding file which is Bruce Godfrey test data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. Index column as date and we parse those dates as true. So let's go ahead and open that data file. As we can see here we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. The first column dates dates with a monthly frequency from the beginning of 1997 all the way to the end of 2016 therefore 20 years of data. Then we have stocks. Stocks corresponds to the dependent or explained variable and it corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle, adjusted close prices, monthly arithmetic returns. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index and adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits, and this corresponds to those adjusted close prices, monthly arithmetic returns. Then we have all independent or explanatory variables. First, monthly effective yield of 1-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield. Then we have monthly inflation or deflation for consumer price index, personal price index, prices monthly arithmetic returns for oil, and monthly arithmetic change of industrial production index and PC or personal consumption expenditures. 
So back into the code file, the following step is that now that we have the data ready, we can continue with Bruce Godfrey test. For this, within the data object with .loc, and we open brackets and close them here, we're going to add a new column here with semicolons, therefore selecting all the rows, comma, and the new column name, which is going to be CONST for constant or intercept, which is going to be equal to CT, that's the feature from stats models, dot add underscore constant to that data. And the following step is we're going to create a new object, which is going to be named IVAR, or independent variables, which is going to be equal to, and within brackets, we have the names of the columns for all the independent or explanatory variables together with that constant or intercept. So we have the constant, one-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield, CPI, PPI, oil, industrial production, index, and PC, or personal consumption expenditures. So then we perform the original regression, which we're going to name REG, and it's going to be equal to RG feature from stats models dot OLS, all of them with capitals. Therefore, we are doing an ordinary least squares in which we have as a dependent or explained variable from data, we select the column with stocks, comma, the independent or explanatory variables from data object, we select IVAR, which are all the column names that we created in that corresponding object above. Comma has a constant equals to Boolean, the one we created a bit at the beginning, dot fit open and close parentheses. So with this, we have the original regression. And with the original regression, we continue to perform residuals, no autocorrelation, Bruce Godfrey test. So we print the title, a blank space, and we're going to print two results Bruce Godfrey LM or Lagrange multiplier, test statistic, and its associated p value. Both of them are going to be printed with NP or NumPy dot rounded for six decimal places. And for the test, we'll be using DG feature from stats models dot ACORR, which means autocorrelation underscore Bruce underscore Godfrey for that regression that we fitted above, comma number of lags equals to one. So this is the number of lags included within Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test. This is an educational example. Therefore, it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. And as mentioned previously, here within brackets at zero position, which with Python notation is the first position, we'll be printing Lagrange multiplier test statistic for Bruce Godfrey test. And then below with Python notation one, therefore the second position will be printing its associated p value. So let's go ahead and run the code file. When you're doing it for the first time at any part of the code, you click the right button on the mouse and you scroll down into the code file name to run it. But as I've done it before, video tutorial, the names are stored here, so I just go ahead, select it, and click Run. Perfect. So that opened the running console, and as we can see here, it's been printed, we see no autocorrelation, Bruce Godfrey test, and here we have the results for Bruce Godfrey, LM, LM4 Lagrange multiplier test statistic, and below the associated p-value, so right here, we have the test statistic, and as mentioned previously, below we have its associated p-value. This is the p-value for the test as mentioned within the slides. Excellent. So now that we finish studying Bruce Godfrey test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.